I have been on the lookout for a powerful audio visualizer plugin for Final Cut Pro for what seems like forever. And so today I am so excited to share with you this incredible new plugin update from my friends over at Boris FX who were kind enough to sponsor this video. Previously on the channel, I showcased an amazing plugin from Boris FX called Continuum for Final Cut Pro. And within that plugin is hundreds of different effects presets, mocha tracking, and now they just added Beat Reactor. and just apply this music track onto my primary storyline. Then we can go into our generators and locate the shapes generator. I'll apply that down here and we can just drag that out to be the duration of our music. Then we can go up into our generators and let's go ahead and disable the fill for right now. After that, we could change the color on this circle and that is looking pretty nice to me. From there, we can come down to the bottom right and locate our effects browser. Now you'll see with the continuum package, it comes with BCC art looks, blur, color and tone, film and style, grads, tints. There are so many that I can't cover all of them, but we're gonna use a few of these to build a really powerful looking audio visualizer. The first one I wanna select is found in BCC lights and that is BCC glow. I'll go ahead and apply that onto this circle. From there, we can go on up to our video inspector and in here, you're gonna notice this new tab for beat reactor. Let's go ahead and click on that down arrow and then we can enable the beat reactor, which will then show us this message. No external media file has been selected. So let's go ahead and do just that. We'll click on this select audio button and locate the audio that we want to use for the beat reactor to react to. You'll notice though that I have to use a dot .wav file. Currently at the time of recording this video, it seems that MP3s do not work. I don't know if that's a feature that's coming down the road, but right now you're gonna need to convert your audio to a dot .wav format if it's not already in that. From there, we can go down and push open. From the beginning, it might look like nothing has happened just yet, but if I scrub through, you'll start to see this audio graph appearing at the bottom of the screen. This audio graph is really great because it reacts perfectly with the music. We can go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of our beat reactor effect and you'll see the audio spectrum options as well as the audio graph options. I'll go ahead and expand the audio spectrum options and in here the first setting you'll see is the frequency resolution. You'll notice how blocky all of these different colors are. So if we wanted to smooth those out quite a bit, we could go ahead and change the frequency resolution from 32 all the way to 1024. And you'll notice now how much smoother that is because the blocks have been shrunk down and allows for more frequencies to be shown on screen. We could also go in and dial stuff like this scale for the entire audio graph. We could change the height of the sub bass. We could increase the height of the regular bass, the mid range, the treble, everything to your liking. Then at the bottom, if there are specific frequencies that you wanna be hitting, you can set that up right here with your minimum frequency hertz and your maximum frequency hertz. Then just underneath that is this smoothness slider. If I drag this to the right side, you'll notice how my waveforms have completely flattened out. But what I like to do is actually take the smoothness slider and drag it all the way to the left side. And now these actually look like the audio waveforms that are found inside of Final Cut Pro, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and set the frequency resolution back down to 32. And I'll actually just reset this entire parameter so everything is back to normal. I'll collapse this, then you can see that we also have audio graph options. If I expand that, we can increase the opacity of our audio graph, plus we can adjust the position of our audio graph by using these controls here. You'll You'll also see these on-screen controls that you can click and drag to do just that. So that is the audio graph that comes with the Beat Reactor, but that is far from all that the Beat Reactor can do. I'm gonna go ahead and find this option for Show Graph and change that from yes to no. So now we just have the glow that we applied earlier. Now, if I were to play my video, nothing would be happening on this circle. That is because we have not told the Beat Reactor what parameters it should be affecting. We'll go ahead and locate Apply Parameter A and you'll see that the option is set to unused. Let's click on that and change it over to brightness. Now you'll notice that the brightness value has changed according to the music down here on my timeline. So if I were to push play, 
we've already created a nice little audio visualizer on our circle. But there's definitely a lot more that I want to add to this. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we might be able to apply the scale factor to the beat reactor. To do that, we're gonna go down to the bottom of our BCC effects here and locate BCC perspective. That is going to give you the BCC transform. Let's go ahead and click and drag that onto our subject. Then we can go ahead and double click on this upper gray bar to toggle the inspector height and I'll scroll down to the bottom where we'll find BCC plus transform. We will expand the beat reactor and enable it. Then we're gonna need to reselect that same audio file that we had earlier. That's going to bring up the audio graph so we can go ahead and set that to no. Then under audio samplers, we can change the apply parameter A from unused over to scale X. And already you'll see how much this is affecting our clip. Let's expand audio options for A. And down here we can find this apply strength percent. Let's go ahead and set this down to something as small as five. Now if I were to push play, that scale is looking pretty good. But you'll notice that the circle is instantly shrinking back to its original size. So if I want to change that so it has a nice fall off to it, we can locate the fall off setting. Currently that's set to unused, which means it is an immediate fall off. Let's change it over to quadratic soft. The fall off time has been set to half a second. If I really expand this out, it would take three seconds for a given audio waveform to go ahead and go completely back down to zero. So I'll play it and you'll see how much of a difference this makes. So it's just really slowly shrinking back to its original scale. Let's go ahead and set this down to something like 0.1 for right now and see how that looks. That is looking pretty good to me. We now have the X value scaling up, but we also want the Y value to scale up so that it's not just stretching it out sideways. So let's go ahead and find apply parameter B and we'll change it from unused over to scale Y. Already you'll see how it is stretching out our circle. That is because the settings are different from option A. So let's go down to audio apply options B, change the apply strength down to something like five. Then we can change the fall off and set that to quadratic soft and we'll set that to 0.1. So now these should be scaling at the exact same rate. Let's go ahead and see how that's looking. So that is looking pretty cool in and of itself, but let's go ahead and add some more visual flair to this effect. Let's go ahead and select our circle shape push option, click and drag to duplicate it. Make sure that they are in the exact same spot so that nothing is out of sync. Then we can come on over to the right side and locate the generator settings. Let's change the outline color from this orange over to maybe something like this teal color. Then we'll go back to the video inspector. And if we scroll down, we'll locate the scale and go ahead and just drag that so that that circle is considerably smaller. So now we have two circles going in tandem, but I want to offset them a little bit so it looks a little bit more visually interesting. Let's take a look at our beat reactor settings, locate our audio apply options A, and maybe adjust how large this gets. So let's set it to get up to maybe 7, and we could even adjust the fall off time to be 0.2. Then we can do the exact same thing with audio apply options B. We can set that to seven, scroll down and set the fall off time to 0.2. And if we wanted to, we could delay how this green one grows. So if we want it to be just a little bit behind the orange, we could do that by setting the delay time to 0.1 and see how that looks. So that is looking pretty cool, but there is something that we could do to make this look even better. Let's go ahead and enable our browser by clicking on this icon. We'll go to our titles and locate an adjustment layer. I'll apply the adjustment layer here on my timeline and just drag it out to be the exact length of our song. Let's go into BCC stylize and locate the prism effect. I'll go ahead and apply that onto the adjustments and you'll see how it's kind of adding this fringing onto our clip. Let's go into the beat reactor. We'll expand that out. We will enable it. We'll select the audio that we need. Then we can go ahead and disable this audio graph. And in here under apply parameter, we'll set it to set the angle start. And already you'll start to see what this is doing. If we push play, this is gonna look pretty wild.
So hopefully you can start to see the sheer power that the beat reactor has within this plugin. And it should be noted that a large majority of the effects found within the Continuum plugin pack can use the beat reactor, which I absolutely love. So not only does it come with a massive amount of effects for you to use, but it also comes with the beat reactor, it comes with mocha masking, skin smoothing, lens flares, and so much more. So if you're interested in picking up the Continuum package, you can use the links down below. I will also have a discount code down there. And one last really incredible thing I wanna cover with this update is not only is it coming to the Continuum package of effects, but it is also coming to the stylized unit for Final Cut Pro. So if you want to get access to a whole bunch of the effects from the Continuum Suite, but you don't want to sign up via a subscription, then you also have that option, which will have amazing effects like light rays, film glow, prism effects, and so much more. If you're interested in seeing some of the mocha features that this plugin comes with, you should check out this video where I cover how to do that with an amazing free plugin from my friends over at Boris FX. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.